Hello, um, welcome back again to the series of videos about overset meshes. So before moving to overset meshes and, and influence, this will be our last video with open fun for your moment. And we're going to deal with over, uh, with flapping airfalls, even and pitching airfalls. So I'm going to introduce you a uh, tabular input input to, to set up that, that that motion. So in the link in the description you will see the where to download this file. So basically we have this structure you see here that in mesh we have the meshes that we generated using ANSYS measure fluent. So here now we're doing everything but the mesh is generated in a total in a completely different environment. So pretty much we work in the same way. We only need just to convert the meshes and so far uh, to our knowledge, you can use any type of cells. So in this case, we're going to work with squats and triangles. But we have to use also well polyedra was no problem. So we're going to convert the mesh. We're going to put everything in the, the folder background. So in Airfall, convert the mesh, then put it in background, and we're set, going to set up everything. So let's go to the flapping fold case and let us generate the mesh. So nothing new here. So we have it there. So just to show you the new state of the different steps. So see that instead of doing using block mesh or snap or whatever, we are converting the mesh from fluent. Okay, it's a 2D mesh. So we are also setting the dimensions. So one, one here, get the mesh from there, and then turn four just to shift the the airfall and then here we do the emergence of the meshes and see that here we're introducing the top of the topological manipulation where we're going to get what is the the region that is moving okay in this case we're not using the check mesh we didn't run check mesh but pretty much works in the same way so as you open top of it you will see that you know the we already know that this this set cells our name is C0, C0, C1, so using those and putting a point in those, you can start those regions and then top of set moving some, we assign the, we create the, the, the cells down. Okay, so we have the cell set, we create, and then we just give it a name, moving some, and voila, we're done. Okay, so this is the, the other way. So remember, check mesh will identify those regions, but if you don't want to use check mesh, or for any reason, check mesh, then identify those regions you can use top of set. So see that you put a point somewhere in your mesh and then you extract your your cell cell. So it's a region to cell cell, okay? So is this point belongs to a region we we'll started uh, we we'll extract that region. If you put that point in the other region, we'll extract that region. In this case we get one region and then some other different operation and just then get the second region is the bar of the first one so you will understand that so as you look also here at the script see that after we, we run check mesh you have also the regions identification here so we could have we could have use all instead of doing this double set region zero region one but just to show you another way most of the time I prefer to, to work with the check mesh you have all the information there so now that we have Everything we go into background where we assemble our, all the meshes, the component meshes, and let's take a look at the difference here. Okay, so instead of using the 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 oscillating or linear motion here, we're going to use an input file. So if you open dynamic mesh dictionary, it's very standard dictionary, the same. Then multi multi solid body motion, which is the most general one. Also, you have solid body motion solid with a single one but my advice is just put it put put multi that means that you can put several uh regions into motion songs into motion again we know the name of the cell set and we want to put it into motion so to put it into motion we basically use these three lines okay so solid body motion function tabulated six degrees of freedom of motion we give a center of gravity or center of rotation okay because this one is also rotating but it is rotating about this point and then time data file table so from this table we're going to read uh the position of the body in time so i will show you how is this table so it's very standard format. So first, the number of 
uh, samples or lines that you have in your in, in your table. So we have a thousand lines. Then first one you have time, time, time. Then you have displacement, and then you have angle. Okay, so very easy. So in this case, we're given the displacement in time. It is just sinusoidal function. So it's the y-axis. I see that you have the displacement, but also we have the rotation, which is about the axis set, the one normal to your screen, and that's all. As you, said, as you see, this one will give you incredible flexibility on setting the motion. You can do whatever you want, and as you have seen, you have you don't have any limitation on the displacement. Okay, so this motion we already created. You can use whatever you want: Excel, MATLAB, Python, any program. You just need to create this table, and then you put it in this very standard uh, in this standard format. Then you go to boundary conditions. They are exactly the same. Nothing changed. Also, here we're adding turbulence modeling. Turbulence modeling, nothing changed. The only thing is that remember that you have the new patch, the overset patch, but the rest wall functions, everything it is exactly the same. Okay. The only thing here that the body remember it is moving, the wall, the airfall should be uh moving wall velocity, and then you have the point displacement, which is very standard uh, setup. As you see, nothing changed. Okay. Even turbulence modeling, the treatment, it is the same. Okay. So the only new thing that we have here is the green the table and then the overset treatment that the solver will compute how these cells are changing, okay, the, the tax of the cells. So it will go from block to interpolation to solve cells. And remember that you would like to have a mesh CFL number or current number that is small enough to guarantee that the change between cell type is sequential, it's very smooth, it's not a, a larger step like without uh, uh, in the previous case, like we studied that case. Okay, so at this point, I think we're ready to to go. Something else to show you here? No, nothing else. Uh, you go to SV Skin, everything is pretty much the same. Okay, nothing changed. We have studied all the entries so far. So, this case. To run, okay, you have most dynamic mesh. This one is a little bit more time consuming, doesn't mean it will take one hour, it's just probably five minutes. I don't want to run that one because we, we, we need to run a few times. So I already have pre compute the motion here, and I'm going to show you what, what we have here. Patafon, and I'm going to show you the mesh. So look at the mesh. So we have two meshes generating influence. So see that we have the background ma mesh, which is quite dominant, but also you have some triangles. And then see that you have the one about the airfall. It is made of triangles. And then close to the body also, we have the prismatic boundary layer. So as you see, you don't have any limitation how you put, the, how you use your cells. It can come from any measure. You just need to, to convert it to, to open form format. So let's do here the traditional way to do the post processing. So remember that uh, we need to extract some cells. So we need to select the volume fills. We apply some thresholds here. So I want to extract some one, some two. Okay. So let me start some zero, and then I was track here. Uh, so uh, okay, so one. So we have the two sums here. Everything fine. Okay, let me put here so face with meshes and so face with meshes. Uh, let me create the cut plans as well. So uh, also about well, probably. One day in the future, I know we are going to create a, a good tutorial about Padview. It's a very powerful tool, so there are many operations. But everything that I'm doing here is you do this continuously. You can uh, parameterize this, and you can create your Python script. I have Python for this somewhere, but I don't recall where I put it. So let me put a, another one here. Okay, this one I will shift it as well a little bit to the front of that one to avoid the overlaying. And voila, we are ready there. Um, we are ready here. Okay, normal color projection. Let me put white background. And if I press play, see what we have. 
So it is rotated. So you give the initial position and then everything is tracked from there. So basically you will see that you have incredible flexibility, okay, when doing things. When I mentioned in the previous video that you can also do morphing meshes within this over, or, uh, component mesh. So this case we have the flapping airflow rope, uh, the airflow undergoing even pitch and motion, but also there is deformation in the airflow, okay. So you can do it. The results are not very uh, encouraging, but it works okay. It makes a little bit uh, to, to work a little bit do some of the actions. Uh, okay, at this point, let me let's see what we have when the cells are changing in time. So remember, those are the cell types. So let's visualize cell types background and this one also wireframe on cell type. Okay. So just to show you, so see what we have here, look at that the interpolation sum here, okay? So previously we already were seeing some very nice quaps, though now it's following the shape of those elements. So all around here we're interpolating. And then we have the background. So it's important in the background, as we mentioned, that you need to have a small enough time step so you didn't have a uh, fast change when you are recomputing all these cells, the computed, interpolated cells, everything. So it needs to be small to have a very sequential smooth change from one cell type to the other cell type. So if I press play here, look at that. As it is moving, it's very smooth sequential. Okay, so probably it will be a good idea to have a finer mesh here. See that probably we're risking some not very good interpolation, but it works okay. There is no problem. So in the next tutorial, we're going to work with Fluent and you're going to see something very interesting about the way how open form works and how can this interpolation or the whole cutting algorithm, the one that is used to, to, to find the hole here can be improved. Okay, so here we're not minimizing the interpolation area. Instead, in Fluent, we're going to have the option. We're going to compute this mesh, and you are going to see that pretty much we have very similar solution uh, results. But then, when we apply the minimization of these overlapping areas, you will see that we're going to have uh, less cells and a much better interpolation and better results. So. Let's see what else I can add here. So pretty much, yes, finally, a fast tutorial. You saw it for about 20, 25 minutes. The first one was 40 minutes. So at this point, we I, get, I hope you master our set matches. So you have the tutorial. Feel free to run all these tutorials, play around with the actions. You will find some comments in all the tutorials and, well, from this point on, we're going to move to Fluent, and after addressing few issues in Fluent, the last tutorial will be a comparison between Fluent and OpenFOAM, but using really body motion, which is the missing part, okay? So far, we we are assigning prescribed motion, that will be the last part, okay? Really body motion, but again, pretty much things are different, but there are a few new peculiarities. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and see you next time. Bye.